Check out this finger setup. This knoll was placed here so that when I move it towards the thumb, the fingers spread, but when I move it away from the thumb, the fingers close in. Stuff like this helps me save time on rigs that I know I'm going to be repeatedly using, and uh, I need to get quick articulations of the hand in less amount of time. This setup was previously achieved through Cycler, but I found that Booster Link is way, way better and pretty much makes Cycler obsolete. For one, it's easier and quicker to set up. No trips to the graph editor are necessary. Uh, I like this. Secondly, if I want to manipulate the finger sometime after I get into the animation process, I can do that. With Cycler, you're pretty much screwed, and you'd pretty much be limited to clumsy workarounds. Since I'm working on this anyways, I figured I would make a short demonstration of Booster Link in action. Uh, I've already done this for the left hand, so I'll work on the right hand. And just as a foreword, I highly suggest looking at Colin Larkin's Booster Link videos if you want a more detailed tutorial. Uh, they may be a little bit long-winded, but he covers about everything there is to know about this tool. Anyways, let's create a null onto the character's hand. Um, I use Evenflow's null as child script for a lot of rigging related tasks, so I'm going to use that to parent a new null to the hand. I'll call it finger spread right. Now, since I've already done the left finger spread control, I'm going to transpose a few settings from that onto the right finger spread control, starting with the item shape property. And next, uh, after positioning the null where I want it to be, then I'm going to use the copy setting command. So I don't even have to bother setting, setting that up like I did with the left hand. To be clear, uh, what's shown in the copy setting command is always derived from the previously selected item. Things like post copy also work this way. What I did here was disable the X and Z planes and constrain the Y to this area denoted by this green line. Now it's time for the actual booster link setup. So what I'm going to do here is make the pitch of these four finger bones change based on where the finger spread null is positioned along the limits, again denoted by the green line. This process is actually pretty easy. Making sure the null is the last thing selected, select each top finger bone, right click the pitch channel, and select Add link. This links the pitch channel with the box's pitch channel. But wait, we want this box's Y channel to drive the pitch of these bones. So what we can do is change the channel on one of the bones, then copy that link's setting and paste it onto the other fingers. To start, let's move the null in the position we want it to be when the fingers are spread apart towards the thumb. Next, we select each finger and position them so that they are spread out. When that's done, we can move the null to the other side of its Y limit. Then we essentially go, okay, so now when the null is over here, the fingers are going to pitch inward. Now notice that when we move the null afterwards, it's driving the fingers. It's that simple. If we want the hand to close a little bit more completely, we can add a tie in the finger bone's Y channel based on the null's position, so that the finger's closed position leaves no space between the fingers, as shown on the other hand's setup. One last note. Let's say that for some reason I need manual control over my fingers during the animation process. It's kind of hard to do something like the Vulcan salute with this rig in place. So, we can select one of the finger bones with a link attached, right-click the word link, and select Edit Graph. Hit B for Bake, and it automatically removes the link and places the animation into the timeline. Just repeat this step for the other Booster Link controlled bones, and you're all set. You have full control over these bones now. See, with Cycler, you can't remove that kind of control setup on the fly, but with Booster Link you can. That's why if you know how to use Booster Link, there's absolutely no reason to ever bother with Cycler. And that's it. This is just one of countless examples where Booster Link can be used to save time when it comes to animating stuff. Perfect for those individuals who like to work smarter and not harder.